and welcome back to Brick Cats. Thanks for joining me today for episode 9 of Viewer Connections, the series in which you watch me do something with LEGO while I talk about LEGO Star Wars related topics. I just put out my latest review on Tam Bricks' Venator class Star Destroyer, so check that out if you haven't already. My next review will be Fukusaku's TIE Interceptor, which I'm aiming to put up on February 23rd. And in the background, you're watching me build the new Snowtrooper Battle Pack. As always, if you have a question or topic you'd like me to discuss, leave them in the comments below, or message me on the platform of your choice. If you find these questions or videos interesting, I am always very thankful if you give the video a like or subscribe to the channel. We are almost at 500 subscribers, and I'm hoping to hit that arbitrary milestone in the coming weeks. Any help you can offer towards that goal, I appreciate very much. The first question for today is, do you think LEGO should try and make their sets look more like the mocks you review? I think they do try and make their official sets look as good as they can, given their constraints. Official LEGO sets and mocks have two very different aims. Official sets have to be both economical and sturdy enough to hold up to a kid playing with it, or in the case of a UCS set, they have to offer a build experience that is accessible enough that the maximum number of people can do it, and it has to look good. Uh, it also has to maintain a certain level of sturdiness. Mocks clearly have no such limitations, which is why mocks tend to have higher piece counts, higher costs, and in general, they tend to look more accurate. There's no way that LEGO will ever be able to mass-produce sets that look as good as some of the mocks that I review, but I think we all need to appreciate the constraints that the LEGO group is working under. Another great thing is that LEGO, by and large, has really expanded their element inventory over the years, which not only makes the official sets look better, but also gives mock builders and designers more tools to work with. Sam Lippincott on Instagram asks, In your experience, how do the order costs on Bricks and Pieces compare to BrickLink? Well, my experience isn't the best indicator because I tend to only get pieces that I know are going to be more expensive on BrickLink directly from LEGO, so order costs are larger, but the price per piece is a lot smaller, and shipping is typically free. I say this in pretty much every review these days, but if you need a lot of a particular element, especially larger tiles, the newer elements, certain brackets, longer or larger plates, many large slopes, or wedges and wedge plates, a lot of the time they're going to be cheaper directly from LEGO. BrickLink is kind of a weird market, and it doesn't follow normal market rules, i.e. if supply goes up, then prices tend to go down in a perfect market, or in an ideal market, that is. But on BrickLink, sellers with a lot of a given element, say for example a 1x1 plate, plate, they often charge higher prices than sellers with very few of the same element, because they know if someone is going to run the algorithm with 200 1x1 plates in it, there'll be one of um, very few results, because not many stores have that many of that given element. So that leads them to increase the price more than they otherwise would. Certain elements are always marked up. In case uh, you didn't know this, most of the time a BrickLink seller just buys stuff from Bricks and Pieces and puts it on the BrickLink store uh, at a markup. Cutting out the middleman can save you a lot of money, and these days I typically only go on BrickLink for retired elements that aren't in production anymore, or if there's something I need immediately that is out of stock, or I can't wait the six weeks it takes for some pieces to get here. Also, another note, I mentioned that I, shipping is typically free, and the way you do that with Bricks and Pieces is that if you have more than $35 in your Bricks and Pieces cart alone, that would not count for free, uh, would not be eligible for free shipping, excuse me. But if you just put one piece from Pick a Brick in your cart, then the entire order gets free shipping. Another user on Instagram asks, would you ever use fake LEGO to build larger sets like the Razor Crest or Monarch or Super Star SSD, which I assume means Super Star Destroyer? No, I'm not going to spend my money on imitation LEGO. Uh, I can't reuse those pieces very easily, and um, I can't be assured that it will have the same tolerances and clutch strength as the real thing. Plus, it doesn't really make sense to comment on a model's stability if I'm not using genuine LEGO, as imitation brands never fit together as well as the real thing. Then there's the issue of actually knowing how to buy imitation LEGO. I'm not aware of a site like BrickLink that would allow me to pick out the exact pieces that I need. 
And I would never buy one of those kits that come with all the pieces you need to build a particular model, as that seems to me like supporting intellectual property theft. One of the tenets of my channel is that designers should get the credit, both monetary by purchasing the instructions, and through acknowledging their work in my reviews that they deserve. My disclaimer on my reviews is 100% true, I only use genuine LEGO, and if I buy a bulk bin with imitation LEGO in it, I tend to separate out those pieces to either recycle or give away on Craigslist if there's a ton of them. The hassles of imitation brands will never be worth the marginal cost savings to me. And last for today, a user on Reddit asks, will you be building the new Brick Vault Slave 1? For those of you that don't know, Brick Vault just revealed the Slave 1 mock built by Marshall Banana and Kevin Walter, and it looks amazing, as you would expect. As of right now, I'm about 99% certain that I will build this at some point. I have not pre-ordered the instructions, and I'm not likely to do so. My schedule right now is pretty full as it is, and there's probably going to be a better deal during a natural sale event, maybe May 4th or Black Friday, than the pre-order discount of 15%. I would say that at best it's going to be six to nine months before I would be able to collect all the pieces and build it, and after that, who knows how long a review of that thing would take to complete. That's all for this episode. If you have a question, please leave it below in the comments, or send it to me by whatever medium you'd like. Only a few more weeks of winter here, and as always, I'm very thankful for all of your support, and hope to see you back next time.